Hello everyone, this is Mario. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2023. It took me a little bit longer to record this than I would have liked, but finally I'm bringing you my first gameplay video on PCM23 and this one is going to be a standalone challenge which I think you will find interesting. We are going to play three one-day races that in real life were won by Tadej Pogacar and those are Ronde van Vlaanderen, the Amstel Gold Race, and La Fleche Vallon. But what I'm going to try today is not replicating what happened in real life. Instead of playing with Tane Pogacar, I'm going to go with the rider that finished in second in each of these races. So in Ronde van Vlaanderen, I'm going to play with Alpecin and try to take Matthew van der Poel to the win, which is probably going to be in a way the easiest of the achievements. Then in the Amstel Gold Race I'll play as EF and take Ben Healy to the win. And finally in La Flèche Vallon I'm going to play as Trek and try to win it with Matthias Kelmose. Challenge number one, Ronde van Vlaanderen and the only monument in the set of three races that we are going to play. Potentially also the easiest one as we are going to take probably the biggest pre-race favorite. Let's see if I don't disappoint. And so we are underway and the PCM gods this time were on my side. I got a plus four on Matty van der Poel. If I don't win this, that is a pretty big statement on my PCM playing skills. So of course I'm playing this with the real life start list, so the riders that took part in the real life race. And we have currently a nine man breakaway group with a few interesting names here, Caleb Ewan is definitely not going to win this race. And we also have Peter Sagan. Peter Sagan is actually allowed to go in the breakaway in the Ronde van Vlaanderen. The world definitely has changed. And so this is the first time out of three that we are going to go through the Aude Quaramont. It's definitely going to be the easiest of the three. We are not really pacing hard at the moment, but I think from now on, I might go and set a hard tempo at the peloton because I need to take advantage of that plus four by Matthew van der Poel and a good way to do that is to whittle the forces of the other teams. So we now have Soren Krau Andersen at the front of the peloton trying to set the hard tempo. He's not alone in this work. We have some De Kunik riders as well. I mean, not De Kunik, Quick Step, uh, Sudal Quick Step riders. At the front, some Jumbo riders were there as well. But we are stretching the peloton a bit. We had a few momentary splits in the peloton, but they all managed to come back. We are now approaching the Bergten out, so a tough climb that we have in front of us. Maybe we can push hard and leave some of the others behind. And the peloton has indeed break apart. The riders are trying to force their way back to the front group. But currently, well, now 67 riders in the main group, but there is a lot of people that were left behind. Let's make sure we don't get dropped here. Krau Andersen is almost done. He's going to finish his work for the day very, very soon. And we are now going to the Aude Quaramont for the second time. We have a few attacks. We have a few attacks. Let's keep a high tempo with Ballerstedt at the front. Christophe and Boivin are trying to attack. Anthony Tourgier as well. So let's make sure we don't get dropped here. We have Tish Benut attacking Stefan Kung as well. Okay, so these are big moves. These are big moves. I was a little bit caught a, a little bit off position. Uh, or out of position, I mean. Let's try to maintain all my riders here. Ah, and there's another split. Vermeer, she's now behind. I need to get to the front. Pitcock is attacking. Fred Wright, Tish Benut. Okay, so some big names are going for it. So we got the escaped riders back. We have 30 riders in the main group. Jenny Vermeer setting a really high tempo and preparing the, the ground for Matty van der Poel to launch an attack. I think the Aude Quaramont is going to be where I'm going to launch the attack. Let's make sure I don't get surprised here. Vermeer can up his tempo a bit, not to allow anyone to attack here. And we have an attack. Valentin Madwa trying to attack. Let's try to maybe follow this. Mohoric and Kaspar Asgren are trying to follow as well. Is this a mistake I'm doing? This is before the Aude Quaramont. Maybe I'm just wasting energy and being too overconfident. 
but let's hope that Mati van der Poel can easily follow. He's wasting a little bit of energy. And now let's put on an attack. Let's go on the attack with Mati van der Poel. Stefan Kung is on the wheel. Tadej Pogacar is following as well. Is this too early? I didn't really manage to create a huge gap. I mean, but I did escape. Mati van der Poel is on his own. He has a 23 second gap on Stefan Kung. So six riders here, Kung, Asgrin, Michael Matthews, Mohoric, Van Aert and Tadej Pogacar. Is Mati van der Poel going to be able to go solo to the end? Oh, they are pushing hard now. Stefan Kung is really pushing hard. Let's keep on going. 22 seconds left. Final 10 kilometers. We have 36 seconds over this group as Stefan Kung launches an attack. He's going to try to bridge to Mati van der Poel. It's going to be hard. Can he do that? The other ones didn't respond. Wat van Aert seems to be completely done. I don't think Kung is going to get to us. Oh no, I had to drop the pace. I had to drop my tempo. And Stefan Kung got to us. I mean, we have a huge advantage. Let's just... Hold on here. Maybe move to the wheel of Kung. He's not going to allow us to do that. I mean, I should easily beat him in the sprint, right? Let's go for it. Let's go for it. And, oh, this is so easy. <laughs> Matthew van der Poel wins Ronde van Vlaanderen and the first challenge is completed. Stefan Kung is second. Michael Matthews in the surprising third. Tadej Pogacar, the one we wanted to beat, finishes in sixth. But as I said, this was probably going to be the easiest of the three challenges. And we had a plus four on top of it. This was really fun to play. Um, I mean, I, I obviously took advantage of the plus four, but I think I did everything the way I should. I paced hard with my teammates and then I launched an attack with Matthew van der Poel when I had to and managed to hold off. I feared a little bit when Kung got to, to his wheel that he still had something left. Um, but... But fortunately, we already had a big enough advantage over the group following us. So I was able to rest a bit and then launch a sprint that Kung couldn't really respond to. So that's challenge number one completed. Let's hope I can keep the momentum going and win the next two. Now heading to the Amstel Gold Race. This is possibly going to be the trickiest of the challenges. Ben Healy is not even my best rider for this race. Nielsen Paulus would probably be the, the better one. But we are going to go for the race with Ben Healy. That's the objective of the challenge. He does have a better flat stat. The problem is that flat terrain is not really something that is very abundant in the Amstel Gold race. And as you can see, Nielsen Paulus is actually in the list of the top favorites. Ben Healy is not in this one. I will still try to do my best, play my cards properly, and hopefully another plus four day for him. Well, another plus four was too good to be true, right? We have Ben Healy on a minus one. We are now 75 kilometers from the finish and approaching the Kauber, a very famous climb. We have not had anything special happening. There were a few crashes and as I mentioned in my first impressions video of PCM23, it does seem that the riders get up on their bikes much quicker than they used to be. So if they are relatively well positioned in the peloton when they crash it's very very unlikely that they will drop out of the peloton so i think in a way that that is a good thing because many times when the rider crashes and doesn't really get injured um they can easily come back to the peloton and don't waste that much uh, that much energy unlike what would happen in pro cycling manager if you crash then you would have to really work uh, pretty hard to, to get back to the front. And this also prevents the AI from going bananas and, and just pacing hard when whenever a leader crashes out. And we have our first attack, David Godou with 45 kilometers to go. He launches an attack, he's followed by Thies Benut and Michael Woods also trying to go apparently. We are still in a pretty good position with, uh, with our riders, with Ben Healy especially. So I'm not going to worry too much. Ineo seems to be controlling the pace. I mean, not really setting a high pace in the pursuit. But now Jumbo... Oh, 
Attila Walter trying to join Tisbanut at the front. That's an interesting move. And we have more attacks. Tom Pidcock going. Oh no. Okay, so this might be problematic. It's Rui Costa actually, the one who launched the attack. Then Pidcock following. A lot of the other riders. Plenty of other riders trying to follow. I need to just move to the front. There was a split in the peloton. A pretty big split actually. Benoit Cosnefroy trying to be brought back to, to the main group by Aje Dazer. We have... Ooh, is that Skelmose? No, that's Quinn Simmons. Quinn Simmons on the attack. Let's just focus on Ben Healy and Piccolo now. Still pacing hard with Vandenberg. More attacks coming out. Now it's Tadej Pogacar trying to follow a few attacks there. I need to maybe pace with Paulus and Sean Quinn. Try to control the pace here. So let's make sure we don't get surprised here with Ben Healy. Let's up the tempo with the others. There are attacks. Is that Quinn Simmons again? Pogacar trying to follow as well. And now it's Godu and Pitcock joining up at the front with Skelmose. I have Piccolo pulling Ben Healy in this group. Pogacar has not launched a strong attack. Nine kilometers left. So it's going to be between these 18 riders, I think. A few more attacks trying to leave us behind. No, not an attack. I want to pace with Ben Healy, not attack. Or maybe I should attack. I don't know. I'm not going to be strong enough. Let's try to follow Lorenzo Rota. Actually, oh, this was too much. This is too much. I can't. I cannot be the one attacking here. Let's try to go on the wheel of Tisbanut. 4k left. Oh, Michael Woods, Michael Woods, let's try to follow Michael Woods. We can't. Pitcock. Okay. The wheel is chosen. Thomas Pitcock is going to take us to the finish line. 2.5 kilometers left. Oh, he's so far down. He's so far down. Let's go on the wheel of Godu now. Am I on the... I'm not on the wheel of anyone. Wait, I'm trying to get on the wheel of someone. But I'm not doing it. Let's sprint, we don't have anything left. Ah, I was so confused now. I was trying to follow the wheel, but I wasn't allowed to. Tadej Pogacar wins it, ahead of Godou. And we finish 10th. So not even 8th. Ah, okay. This was a tricky one. Maybe I should have attacked. Uh, but there were so many people attacking at the same time that I, I didn't really see the... The opportunity for that, I tried to follow a few attacks, maybe that was a mistake. So Pogacar is celebrating in the podium of the Amstel Gold Race, as he did in real life. We took the Ronde van Vlanderen from him, but not this one. So yeah, there at the end it took me a little bit to, to realize that I was not actually following the wheel of neither Pitcock nor Godou. And I was going at 90, so I was wasting the little red energy I had left. Um, so yeah, that hindered my chances. I wouldn't win it anyway in, in the, at that point of the race. But still, I could have maybe gotten a little bit better than, than P10. And let's go to the final one today, La Flèche Vallon, the shortest of the three races. We have Matthias Kjelmoz as the rider we are going to try to take for the win. He is this time in the list of favorites. And in the wise words of Tim Soski, oh my words, look at these race day conditions. Skelmose is on a minus one, so we definitely know who is not going to win La Flèche Vallon. He is not going to win it. And then Molema on a minus two, Chicone on a minus three, Julien Bernard on a minus two, Juan Pedro Lopez on a minus three. No, I don't want to attack. Whoops. <laughs> I definitely did not want to attack and I just broke everything. I just broke this. I need to I need to have riders protecting my my main man for this one. I did not want to click Q for an attack. I wanted to press 1 for the shortcut to select all the three riders. Okay, I changed kind of changed my mind. Uh you know I I can't stay still and I I need to take the initiative when playing this game. I'm going to try to set the tempo at the front of the group. So Madwas is trying to go again. He's trying to, he's being followed by Cosnefroy and Tadej Pogacar. 
Let's have Molima pulling Skelmose, not really responding directly to the attacks. They are getting away. Let's make sure Molima can keep Skelmose in a good position. Pedro Bilbao attacking, Tizbanut, Tadej Pogacar trying to follow. Yeah, we are whoa, barely making it, barely making it. Still 94 riders, but this is probably going to split right now. Let's use the energy gels a little bit late, maybe. Maybe a little bit late. Molima on 85, protected by Chicone. Still 29 riders, so that's 29 riders. Going for the finish line, 2.5k, the Mur de Uy is going to start as we turn to the right. Actually, a little bit further ahead. It's still a, a right turn. Let's go up to 87 maybe with Molima. 88. I don't want to use a lot of energy on Skelmose. I swear I didn't move Molima to the right. Let's go up to 99 with him. Oh, did I go too late? Did I go too late? Was this too late? Let's go with Skelmose. I'm not going to win it. David Godou wins it. Damn it. I think I played this poorly. Godou wins ahead of Tadej Pogacar. Can we get a podium? Can we? No, it's P4 for Skelmose. So the winner of La Flèche Vallon is David Godou ahead of Tadej Pogacar. Well, Pogacar didn't win. So it's a win for me and a win for him. He did beat us two times out of three. Oh, we actually won the... Team's classification in this one. And you know what else we got? We actually won with Bauke Molema because he was 8th. And as we all know, 8th is the new first. Yeah, La Flèche Vallon with the Mour de Huy finish is always tricky to, to win. I think I did everything the way I should. I was at the front with, with Molema and Skelmose, so I was in the best position. And I think I played it well. I wasn't too aggressive on the start. But yeah, with the minus one, I definitely didn't have the, the punch, the kick uh, needed with Skelmose to, to take the win. Godu and Pogacar beat us. We almost got to, to tease Benut and to a podium finish. And at the end of the day, Tadej Pogacar did not manage to win more races than I did. And so that is it for today. I hope you have enjoyed this little challenge I brought you today. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. It definitely helps the channel. And leave me a comment down below, let me know what you thought of it. Of course, if you are new around, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the future videos that I'm going to bring you. Hopefully next week, the first episode of the new career mode is going to be released. I do apologize if my voice sounded a little bit different today because I'm still a little bit sick, but hopefully it was not terrible. And finally, as usual, stay safe, stay positive. Until next time, goodbye.